In this video, we're going to talk about handling ties with the top end function in DAX. Uh, top end is great when you want to focus attention in your report to the top or bottom items. Um, and usually the behavior it uses, uh, how it handles ties, is favorable um, in that all items that are tied in that nth position, so say you do top 10, uh, all the all the products or whatever in that tenth position would be returned, which is usually the behavior you want. Um, but there are scenarios where you don't want that behavior, and I'm going to give you um, an example in this video and how to work through it. Um, it turns out you can use the RAND function to dynamically break your ties uh, in your DAX expressions. In this case, it'll be a measure, um, and you also can use it with rank X. Uh, I'm not sure if anybody would really want to use what I'll show, but uh, just to be complete, I thought I would just show the Rank X version as well. Um, if you're learning from these videos, please go ahead and follow me on Twitter and subscribe to the Hoosier BI YouTube channel. All right, so let's describe this scenario. In this case, uh, this is the data table here. Uh, we've got um, three students and their scores that they got on each of 15 different tests. And I've used some conditional formatting, uh, a DAX expression, to just color uh, in red anything, any values that are duplicate for, for that student. And say in this case, we want to take the average or sum of the top 10 uh, scores and only count those. Uh, I'm going to use sum in this case so it can make it more obvious what's going on there. Uh, but typically, in this case, you might use an average. So if we're doing the top 10, and we look at Joe's scores, we see that that 10th value is unique. So the default behavior uh, for top end is going to be fine. Uh, same thing for Mary. But if we look in Susan's case, there's five values uh, for 90. And so top end uh, would return uh, all five of these rows and include it in your total. And that can be seen here. So if, if we look at this um, table here, if we look at this top 10 uh, wrong one, you know, this is how you might typically approach this, where you'd say, hey, I'm going to create this virtual table of top 10. Uh, I'm going to iterate over the scores table. This would be in the context of that student, so it would just be the scores for that student. And then I'm going to use the value in the scores column, and I want that descending. And that should give me the top 10 rows. Um, and then I'm going to I wrap that in a sum x, and I'm going to iterate over that top 10 and use the value in the scores column to to be included in that sum. And if you look here, um, while that works well for Joe and Mary, for Susan, we get a really odd number here. If we're adding up 10 numbers that are all less than or equal to 100, it would be impossible to be over 1,000. So clearly, this is wrong. Um, and it's because of that behavior that all five of these rows are getting returned. So if we look at um, two approaches to solve this, using the RAND function, and the second one is better, so definitely uh, that's the one I recommend. Um, but this is how I initially approach this, and I've seen similar things out on the community as well. Um, so what I do first here is make this virtual uh, table, where again, I iterate over the scores column. This would be in the context of each student. And I create this virtual column, uh, C plus small number, where I take the value in the scores column, and add a random number. And since these are all integers, I, I divide it. I went overboard here, divided it by 10,000. Um, but just to make each one different and make it so it doesn't impact the, the ranking. And so once that virtual table is created, I can then uh, do the top end over that. And in this case, I'm using this virtual column to decide which one is top uh, or not. And since each value is unique, uh, I can be confident that I'm only getting 10 rows. And so then again, I can wrap that in sum x, and I can use the original score column in my sum x, and then I get the correct uh, answers uh, for each student. Okay. Now it turns out, um, if you look at the documentation on top x, and I'll just go to the top end page on dax.guide, which is a great site to uh, learn about dax functions, um, you can see here in the syntax that, yeah, I put my top 10 value, the table I'm iterating over, my order by expression, and then you know ascending or descending. Um, but it turns out this can accept multiple order by expressions, uh, and so you can keep repeating those. And so this is how you can use um, the RAND function in a little bit more elegant way uh, to get the, the correct answer. 
So in this case, if we go to the, uh, the second version of this function, you can see it's shorter. And in this case, uh, again, I'm doing top 10 over the scores table. Uh, my first order by expression is the score. I want that descending. And then I'm just going to use the ran function, and it could be ascending or descending. And so it's going to use this second order by expression to break the ties and therefore only return 10 rows. Uh, and again, I wrap that with some x, and I add up the original scores column, and I get the correct answer. Okay. So this is definitely the way I would recommend approaching this, uh, just real quick and easy in your top end to, to use the RAND function. All right. Now, again, this scenario probably isn't needed very often, but what if you said, hey, I don't like the default behavior of rank X, either the dense or skip uh, version of those where I see the same rank. I just, I just want it to give each one a different number. Um, and so this is the same data set. Uh, we've got the, their individual test scores here. And so you'd think on this one, a, a typical kind of rank X approach might, might be appropriate for you. Um, and in this case, uh, I actually didn't, didn't need to do this variable up here. Um, you really just need this, this part here where I'd say I'm going to do a rank X over uh, all of the test numbers and removing the filter from the, the test number row here. And then I need context transition, so I wrap it and calculate, but I just get the max score, and then I'm adding the RAND function. And this, this time I only divide it by 100, but it doesn't matter. Um, and then I'm leaving the third term blank. And so when you do this, rank X will automatically calculate in the current context uh, the value. Uh, and this is actually where the problem is, because uh, if you look at the results for this one, you see some, some weird numbers. And so you can see here, um, you know, we're, we're getting some weird numbers here. Um, you know, these are not uh, uh, in, in the right order by far, you know, seeing weird stuff. And again, I think it's that third term where it's independently adding the random number um, to, to that separate uh, calculation for that third term versus the one that's up in the table that's actually being ranked. And so we can see weird behavior here. Um, so it is possible to, to get the desired result with a longer DAX expression. Uh, and in this case, I'm storing the test number in a variable so I can reuse it later. And I'm using calculate table um, to remove the, the uh, filter from the test number column. And then I'm just using select columns to go get all the, the test number and scores, and I have to rename those. So I'm just using, you know, I use lowercase c to designate a column, virtual column, uh, and then uh, adding a column to that, you know, the score with the rand, and then dividing that by 100. And then um, I need to uh, get the, the value for the, the current row. And so I'm I want to use the already existing, already calculated RAND value. So I'm filtering this virtual table, filtering this virtual column in this virtual table to the original test number and getting the uh, score with the RAND number. And then this is a technique to, a, a different way to get a rank is to count the number of rows that are uh, have the higher or same value as, as the current one. So in this case, again, I'm filtering this virtual table. All the numbers are already calculated. And I'm saying where the, the score with the RAND number is greater than or equal to um, the value with RAND for this test number. Uh, and then I get my expected results. Now, because they're um, tied, you know, you're never going to know which one will actually pop up first. But all of the things have a separate number. So, you know, three, four, and five could be in different under. That's just part of the RAND. Um, but they all, all 15 numbers are there, and that's the case for all three students, right? So again, there's probably not a lot of need for, uh, for this use case, but I thought I would show it as the resolution of ties with rank X isn't as straightforward as uh, with top N. Okay, thank you.